Rivals of Aether 2 is awesome. I have been loving every second I've played of each beta so far, and I am so excited for the official release, which is right around the corner. The developers have already confirmed that they'll be supporting this game long after launch, and what's even better is that all the post-launch characters will be free for everyone. But that begs the question, who's coming next to Rivals 2? Well, we already know one character, but it'll be a while until she's added. Lorena was the winner of the Community Workshop Contest earlier this year, and she looks phenomenal. She is tons of fun to play in the first game, and I just cannot wait to see her added. However, the team has already said that they're targeting her to be the 15th to 20th character added to the game, which means we are getting a bunch of characters before. So who's next? This list is going to be a mix of who I think is most likely to see join the Rivals 2 roster and who I personally think would be the most interesting. You can use the timestamps below to skip around if one section interests you more than the others, and you can use that funny little like button to support me in the algorithm. I hope you enjoy it, and leave your comments on who you'd like to see below. I'd truly be interested to hear it. I'm almost 90% certain that the first character added post-launch is going to be either Absa, Edelus, or Malo, and I'm almost willing to put money on it. Absa and Edelus are the last two characters from Rivals 1's pre-DLC cast that haven't made it into the sequel yet, and as such, I think their longevity on its own just makes them very likely. They have pretty unique playstyles, with Absa being a floaty zoner reminiscent of Zelda or Mewtwo, and Edelus being a momentum-oriented heavy who can manipulate the stage with his ice. Edelus in particular I would love to see, because I've always loved how Rivals designs their heavyweight fighters. Also, he has some of the funniest aerials in the entire game, and I just need to cheese some people online with that up air again. As for Malo, well, the developers have hinted at him coming to Rivals 2 on a few different occasions. Um, we have to think about if we're willing to lose half of our player base when Malo comes out. Um, you know, there's yep. lots of lots of different things that we have to be aware of. Someone in chat literally is like, I I have another friend that also wants Malo back really bad. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Like that's not part of the, the fun thing to us is like making a really gory skin or something. So yeah, we're just going to keep everything like <laughs> pretty PG. Geek's in here. I know Geek wants to put a gun in Rivals 2. <laughs> there will be guns. Malo has a gun and Malo's coming back. It's a flare gun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. He's a zoner with an array of different explosives, and honestly, I think he's one of the characters I'm most excited to see in the Rivals 2 engine. I'm interested to see how they'll adapt his design, being that he'd be the first insect character added, and I think there's a lot of cool opportunities for how they could implement his bombs into the new engine. Will they still work like they did in Rivals 1, where they exist on the stage and characters can bat them away? Or will they go with a route similar to Smash, where you could actually pick them up as items? I would personally love to see what Rivals could do with item play like this in a competitive setting, and it could open up mechanics like Z-dropping and Glide tossing as either character-specific mechanics to Malo or universal mechanics for everyone. Now, this is more of a new mechanic that all characters would have to interact with, so I'm not very confident that this is going to happen, but it's a cool thing to theorize about for sure. I could see them implementing new bomb types for Malo for his special pummel, getup attacks, and ledge special as well. Maybe a landmine or smoke bomb for his getups? I'd love to see a sticky grenade for his special pummel. Instead of having it on a second trigger like Snake and Smash, it could be timed, and you could delay your throw after the initial pummel to slightly change when it would detonate. I just think there's a lot of really interesting ways Malo could be adapted, so I'm really excited to see him join up. With Fleet coming in as a newcomer from Dungeons of Aether, I think the team has a great opportunity to bring in another of the three playable characters in this game as a newcomer for Rivals 2. The idea of newcomers in general is pretty exciting, because I personally would love to see what new design space the developers could explore, especially now that they have plenty of new moves to build the characters around in this game. My personal pick based on these three options would definitely have to be Slade, though. I haven't finished Dungeons of Aether, but his design is just really appealing to me. I love the way he's animated, and I think this personality could come through really well in some sort of bait and punish or aggressive but elegant playstyle. I also have a huge soft spot for sword fighters in any fighting game, and seeing that we really only have Claren so far, I think we could certainly use another one on the roster. I don't have a lot of concrete ideas for him, but I do see him as being a more aggressive sword fighter without a tipper, while also making use of his tail and other body parts for a few non-sword based moves. I'm sure the developers could design some sort of interesting mechanic for him based around the dice in the game or some other Dungeons of Aether mechanic as well. As for the other two, I definitely don't think they're bad options, but they do appeal to me a lot less. Amir could be interesting as a super heavy that hits hard but is also susceptible to becoming combo food, and maybe you could bring in some sort of passive armor mechanic like Bowser's tough guy in Smash Ultimate to balance that out. As for Artemis, I see her as being a villainous, fire-based, heavyweight bruiser who wields a giant battle axe. 
If this concept sounds interesting to you, that's great, because Loxodon is already in the game and he is also all of those things. I just personally think she has too much design overlap with what they went for with Locks already, which isn't necessarily a problem. I'm sure they could come up with something interesting for her to do differently, but having characters that feel unique mechanically and design-wise is definitely a big deal for me personally when it comes to a game with a smaller roster size like this. But hey, maybe if Rivals breaks its way into semi-clones or Echo Fighters in a few years, then maybe she can join up with, like, Bradshaw or whatever. When I said I was 90% confident that the first post-launch character would be either Absa, Edelus, or Malo, that's because that last 10% is reserved exclusively for Hodan. To me, it's not a matter of if the funny monkey comes to Rivals 2, it's a matter of when. He already has a stage themed after him in the base game in Hodojo, so they clearly aren't afraid to use this character. I personally love the Workshop 4, and I think that getting any of them into Rivals 2 early on would be super fun. Hodan brings a lot of really interesting concepts to the table too. His special getup and ledge specials could be used for setting up or repositioning his sweat spirits. And maybe he could have charged throws based on either his special pommel or whether he starts to throw in contact with a sweat spirit. Being a charge character in a platform fighter is pretty uncharted ground, so I'd love to see them take the opportunity to flesh him out a little bit more. I loved most of the updates they gave him between his community release and official release, so I just think it would be super cool to see him get some more charge variants of his moves. Just don't change his charge forward air or his funny up smash. Rivals 1 featured Ori and Shovel Knight as third-party representatives, and while the devs have said that they have no plans to bring these two specifically back, I do think that some third-party indie characters would be really great for this game. I want this game to succeed, and I think that getting some high-profile indie reps could be a great way to draw in even more players. The crossover aspect is a huge appeal of other fighters, especially Smash Bros, and even in games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Seeing crossover characters is always a big point of interest for new players. The one gripe I have with possible guest characters is that I really want to make sure they fit into Rivals 2's art style. Ori and Shovel Knight were from different worlds, but they could still feasibly exist in this fantasy world of Rivals. So please, don't add any humans. This is a game about animals, so as funny as it would be to just have some dude walking around there, I personally think we should stay away from that. There are plenty of human indie characters I love and I think would work great, but for my money, let's just keep the fantasy aesthetic. And I know what you're thinking, isn't Shovel Knight a dude? Maybe, but he also might be a fish. That's kind of up for debate. There's a few guest ideas I had in mind that I think would really fit in artistically and draw in new players. The first is Hollow Knight, or you know, Hornet if Silksong ever releases. I haven't personally finished Hollow Knight yet, but I love the designs of both of these characters and they seem like they'd have some super fun moveset potential. This is probably my number one pick for a Rivals guest character. I think this addition could really draw in a lot of new players from the Hollow Knight side of things, and especially more if Hornet is the rep to promote Silksong. The hype for this one would just be unreal, and I think it would really help the game grow. One character I think would be absolutely hilarious would be Ultra Fish Bungeon 3000 from Slap City. He's already in Frame Makers with Orcane, so I don't know if they want to step on McCloud Gaming's toes like that, but god would he be funny. Just a massive lumbering dude who's way too big fucking shit up. I kind of imagine him as being taller than Loxodont, even if that's not quite realistic. Plus his entire moveset's already done for you, so that's a plus. You could also do a Cuphead if the licensing for that is in hell. Mina the Hollow Earth, they'd want to work with Yacht Club Games again. Super Meat Boy, Tunic, Dead Cells, Among Us, literally anything. Ukulele would be great too. Their design fits right into the world of Rivals and I think the team could come up with some pretty unique stuff for this duo to do. The only thing that might hold them up is the fact that they appear in Brawl Out, so I'm not sure if being in another platform fighter precludes them from coming to Rivals, but I think it'd be a really fun addition. The Golden Goose, so to speak, is not necessarily even a goose, but Sans from Undertale. Mimi as it may be, the crossover alone would draw in an insane amount of players. Who knows if Toby Fox or the Rivals devs would even want this to happen, but bar none, that is probably the biggest profile guest character they could get in this. This doesn't really fit into the art style as much either, but it's fantasy, and it would be pretty funny still. I wouldn't even be mad. Hear me out. I want the Rivals team to officially canonize Guadua as part of the roster for Rivals 2. When Rivals 1 added workshop support, the team put out this official character to show just what was possible with the new tools. This puts Guadua in a really interesting spot, where she's both an official veteran but also not technically part of the Rivals 1 cast. She could be both a newcomer and a veteran character at once, or some kind of weird mix in between. While that's not really that important, it is cool to think about, and it would give us a veteran character that still feels like a newcomer to many players. It's the best of both worlds. From what I understand, she was canonized as part of the Rivals cast in Creatures of Aether, so I think she's more than fair game to bring into this sequel. 
I also just think that Guadua is a sick character. If you aren't familiar with her, she's an earth-based heavyweight with the ability to throw out bamboo in the air and tether to it from anywhere. She can also plant it into the ground and hit it out to provide an automatic aerial tether point. Her bamboo mechanic would fit in really nicely with the new moveset options in Rivals too. Her special getup could easily plant a piece of grounded bamboo from her down B into the ground, or maybe her special getup could provide a tether point on the ledge that she could sling to. Now this is already what Maple does, so it might be too similar, but it's an interesting concept. An easy option for her special pommel could be to apply this leafy effect that enhances her neutral B, but let me put you onto a much crazier idea. What if her special pummel threw out a piece of this aerial bamboo alongside the target, which would allow her to tether to follow up on her throws? There's a lot of super interesting ways this character could be adapted into this new engine to make a stylish character who can extend super deep for follow-ups, and I think she would just be one of the most hype possible additions to this roster. Plus she just blatantly has Falcon Raptor boost as her side B, so if you like that move, have a field day. Please, bring back the biggest baddest panda the world of rivals has ever seen. My next suggestion is very, very vague. Something from Creatures of Aether. Like, just anything. I'll level with you, I haven't really played Creatures of Aether. Hard battlers have never really been my thing. But the game looks pretty well designed and mechanically fun, and god, that pixel art is just gorgeous. My idea for Rivals 2 though is this. Use a design that already exists in Creatures of Aether. They have so many unique and interesting character designs for this game, and I have no doubt that something in here could be adapted into an interesting platform fighter moveset. From what I understand, cards in this game have special mechanics, so maybe you could pick a creature with an interesting design and core mechanic and go from there. I really think the sky is the limit with this idea, and I just think it would be a shame to see all of these sick designs in this game and have not even one of them be considered for a newcomer for Rivals 2. This penguin looks pretty cool, maybe do that guy. I don't know. More importantly than just attributing a moveset to a cool existing design, something I'm really excited to see from the post-launch characters in this game is just something entirely new from this team. Fleet and Loxodont, the two newcomers in this game, are designed super well and both have been super fun to play as. They feel totally unique and cover uncharted ground in this roster in a great way. I'm a big fan of them and I cannot wait to see what the team does next. Some of the biggest joys from following Rivals 1's development was watching what new interesting characters they could come up with. The DLC characters for that game were all joys to discover as they were announced, and I just want Rivals 2 to be able to replicate some of that level of surprise with this new game. Give us some kind of entirely new design, and come out confidently with it. Eliana and Sylvanas were super unique DLC fighters in the first game, and their designs were unlike anything we had seen up to that point. There's so much potential here, and you could theorize indefinitely on new ideas for new characters. I loved reveals like Claren and Rano in the first game because they showed off a Rivals-style take on common archetypes in the platform fighter genre. Their designs are easy for people coming from Smash to understand, while still doing something new and super creative with these concepts in a game that relies much more heavily on character-specific mechanics. I would love to see something again like this personally. The addition of grabs means you could add a brand new character with a tether grab and Zare, which I think the team could put a cool spin on. For my money, I'd personally like to see a rival-style take on a transforming or stance change character. This is another of my favorite archetypes in fighting games, and I think Rivals could do it in a really interesting way. Whether it's something more akin to Pyra and Mithra and Ultimate, where the frame data and specials are the key difference, or a true multiple-in-one character like Pokemon Trainer or Zelda and Sheep. Eliana kind of embodies this design, but I really want them to full-on embrace it. I think a really funny idea would be to see a character that's just blatantly too big, like the Iron Giant in Multiverses. This would probably be a balancing nightmare in this engine, but I think it'd be really fun to see what they can come up with. This one is an incredibly unlikely choice, but I would love to see Badra make an official appearance in Rivals 2. This one definitely would not happen for a long time, since Lorena was the official contest winner, and was stated to be somewhere between the 15th to 20th character added to the game. There's absolutely no chance we get him before her, or probably even in the top 20. That said, I just love this character. There's so many sick things about this character, from the way his kit flows together, to the movement, to everything in between. Replaying the characters from the Workshop contest got me back into Rivals 1 big time, and I've had so much fun just playing this one character, I'm honest. His inspiration is pretty blatant, but so are some of the Rivals characters for being fair. So yeah, in my incredibly biased opinion, I think this is fair game. Also, there's just no way to make Crosslash look bad in any video game ever. That shit is raw as hell. And to be totally honest, bring in any of the four runner-ups from the Workshop Contest after Lorena is added. 
I had a ton of fun with all of these and I'd be delighted for any of them to join. Trapping people with Helios' pool balls was super unique and bringing down the mailboxes for the kill with Yono had me popping off the first time I played. And Watsu? The kit synergy is just golden with this one, plus they said this was Dan's favorite entry. I'd be happy for any and all of these guys to join in the far future if this game does well and gets long term support. I'm happy to hear that the devs will get profile icons of their entries to give out in Rivals 2, so at least they'll all appear in the game in some capacity. Great job to the devs of all five of these characters, and to everyone who submitted one. Thank you all for giving back to the community. My number one most wanted character in Rivals 2, controversial as it may be, is without a doubt 100% Palm. I absolutely adore this character. The Workshop Pack in the first Rivals of Aether was a phenomenal expansion to the game, and I loved seeing the community and devs work so closely together. Of all four of these characters though, Palm is easily my favorite. I know a lot of the community finds her annoying, but I personally love everything about her, from her playstyle to her pop star design. I also think that using sound as theming for an air elemental is a fantastic idea, and honestly, it's just not one that ever crossed my mind before I saw her. I think she'd fit really well into this new engine too. Fleet already has a float, but other platform fighters are no stranger to having multiple characters with floats. Plus, they could make it so hers doesn't lose height like Fleet's does. I think there's so many interesting ways they could adapt this character. Her getup special could throw out singles from her neutral B, and I'd love to see how they'd implement her throws. She could throw them herself or have Vince be the grab, much like how Peach's throws are assisted by Toad in Ultimate. Imagine a special pommel where she hands off the grab player to Vince, who slides forward so you could reposition yourself for a whole new set of follow-ups. It could be like having double the amount of throws, or pommel's variation on the cargo throw. Just keep Vince in her moveset. He's perfect and I love him. And being able to have him rush out and relay the enemy back to you with side B is what makes this character so great to me. Bring this duo back. I need them back. This is the one character in the game that I would actually pop off at a reveal of. Before I finish, I just want to lightning round the veteran characters from Rivals 1 that I didn't get to talk about yet. Eliana I mentioned briefly, but she's definitely got a very weird moveset in a good way. She's not personally my cup of tea to play, but she's got some really funny stuff, and I do like her character design. I wouldn't personally be mad if she joined, but I don't see her coming till much later because of how complex her design is. Similar case with Sylvanas, he's very interesting to me, and I think his moveset has a lot of depth. I'm almost certain he'll make a return too, especially based on some of Dan's comments on Twitter, but he has some animations in the first game where parts of him morph into this, like, Venus flytrap portion, and those animations are significantly harder to do with a 3D model than with sprite art. I don't think that'll hold him back by any means, but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if he takes a bit longer than others to return. Lastly is Olympia. I think Olympia is just the character that I feel the most apathetic to returning personally. I don't dislike her by any means, I think she's a really fun Rushdown character. When I first saw her design, I was really intrigued to see how they might adapt a Shoto into Rivals, but when I played her, I realized she's way closer to me Brawler than she is to Ryu, if that makes any sense. Also, I get my ass kicked way too much with her online, but for real, I couldn't think of anything super interesting to adapt for her new moveset options, but I wouldn't be upset with her return either. I think she could be really fun in this new engine, just not my cup of tea in the first game all so much. Sandbird's not really a character, but I think it'd be funny if he came back as a joke character for Rivals 2 and he's still a sprite. Just port him 1 to 1 into Rivals 2 and let him exist as a 2D character. It would be a great April Fool's joke and probably pretty easy to implement. One more that doesn't really count, they showed this silly little Armando guy in the trailer for the workshop contest and I wouldn't be surprised if he is an April Fool's joke character too. Like just T-posing the whole time, never animated, could be pretty funny. You know, if Rivals 2 ever gets workshop support in like 5 to 6 years, I could see this guy being the template character like Sambert was in the first game. So what would my ideal roster look like? Since they said that Lorena would be in between the 15th to 20th character, and the original Rivals of Aether ended with 18 characters on its roster, I thought I'd very quickly give my pitch for a 20 character roster. The devs have said before that they aren't super concerned with keeping the four elements even in terms of number of representatives, but I wanted to try to keep some sort of visual balance here, so that's what I went for. This roster leaves us with one newcomer for each element, two in the base game and two in the DLC, and two guest characters who could be literally anyone. The rest are fan favorite returning characters, except for Sylvanas, but it's my roster and I can choose to put the funny panda on before the dog, okay? 
we will probably get some fully original characters before we hit 20 characters, but obviously I have no idea what they could possibly be, so I filled those slots with veterans. These slots can probably go to brand new ones. Or hey, maybe we won't get any new crossovers in the first 10 DLC characters, and then these two can be the new Air and Earth characters. Would you do any of this differently? Do you hate my opinions and therefore, by extension, hate me? Let me know below, and thank you so much for watching. Also, bye Rivals too.